Hey guys, and welcome to my new movie review for the 2020 straight to Disney Plus streaming Artemis Fowl. Now, for those of you who don't know, just letting you know that Artemis Fowl was actually lined up to go into the cinemas sometime this year, but due to COVID-19 and all that sort of stuff, it unfortunately went straight to streaming. Now, just before I get into the synopsis, guys, I, I personally would say it, to this movie that it is actually unfortunate that this didn't get a theatrical run. I kind of get it, but it is unfortunate in my opinion. And I'll tell you my thoughts on the review on, on Artemis Fowl, my review on it right after the synopsis. Artemis Fowl synopsis. Artemis Fowl, a young criminal prodigy hunts down a secret society of fairies to find his missing father. So as I said guys, this movie went straight to Disney Plus. Now, one of the things, and for those of you who have been following my channel for any period of time, one of the things that I actually don't like and I don't appreciate to any degree at all because I just, because it's, it's so many different people's opinions gathered into one thing, and then it's put on a website, and I strongly, strongly, strongly disagree with it, and that is Rotten Tomatoes. Now, Rotten Tomatoes is a bunch of critics getting together and giving their review on a movie, right? Now, the unfortunate thing is, because it's on streaming, who knows whether they actually watched the whole thing? So that's why I don't really believe it. Like, and if, for those of you who know, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice got like, I think it was 26% on Rotten Tomato, which is so bad. And to this day, I do not understand that. Why am I bringing that up, you ask? Because when I see Rotten Tomato reviews, you you watch, you see the review and think, oh, that's really bad. And kind of straight away, because of the fact that you've seen that, you kind of make up your mind on the movie already without even seeing it. And I think that's bad judgment. I really, really do. Because, guys, all film is subjective. All film is subjective. It doesn't matter when you watch it or how you watch it. But all film is subjective. You can watch a movie one day and then three days later watch it again. And it's literally, it's just... It is what it is. You see it in a different view or you see it the same. But sometimes it changes the way we see movies. And that's why when I saw that review, I was really surprised. Now, I need to tell you this. The first time I watched it, the first time I watched it, I actually fell asleep several times. But I don't think that was the movie. I genuinely don't think it was the movie. I, it was just... I'd finished work, I just got home, I was just sitting down and I was relaxing for, from being at work. So I don't feel it was the movie. In fact, I started re-watching it again before I did this movie review and I was just distracted and my mind was so focused on doing this that I thought, no, 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 I don't need to re-watch it again because I just really wanted to express my thoughts on the movie before going into any you know before i just really wanted to give you guys this review in fact when i do when i when i edit this together i'll probably continue watching the rest of it but in saying that guys this movie is rated pg and the duration is one hour and 35 minutes long it's an action family fantasy movie and man alive do they does disney draw out those elements of this movie of the fantasy and it is, guys. It's a Disney movie. This movie specifically, um, this really movie is really, really specifically focused. Its focal connection is to a younger audience. It's a Disney movie. It's not a Marvel movie. Disney owned Marvel, but this is not a Marvel movie. It's a Disney movie. So it's fun. It's cute. It's got adventure. It's for the family. This, that's exactly what this movie is. If you have Disney Plus, if you have the streaming service on Disney Plus, I really, really, really would recommend this movie. Now, for those, anyone, anyone of you who have been following my channel, you know the core thing that I look for in a movie, the core element in its DNA, the purpose of a movie, and what I like to call rewatchability, guys. And that's the question. Does, does Artemis Fowl have rewatchability guys and to that I say to you I really think it does 
Guys, when I was watching this movie, I actually had this, this, I really did. I actually thought to myself as watching this movie, there is going to be child or children who watch Artemis Fowl that literally think to themselves, I guarantee you, and I mean, there's no way of actually proving this, but I just really feel that they would say this to themselves after watching Artemis Fowl, to say to themselves, yep. I'm going to be a filmmaker one day, purely because of the color palette, the direction, the just, the fun in it. It's just a good quirky movie, and especially the cast of this movie, guys. They just bring it out. They really, really draw that fantasy element to the silver screen, well, literally, unfortunately, to our living rooms, or however you're going to watch this movie. But, you know, this movie isn't designed, it really wasn't, unfortunately, well, technically no movies designed for the, to watch on an iPhone, they're all designed for the big screen, but in saying that, it, this, it, this is what happened to this movie, guys, and whether the studio had belief in this movie or not, they still put it on streaming, which is unfortunate because now it'll never be, it will never go to cinema, unfortunately. But it's directed by Kenneth Branagh. Now, if his face rings a bell, that's because he played Commander Bolton in the Christopher Nolan movie back in 2017, Dunkirk. Yes, that's exactly who this guy is. And Man Alive, Dunkirk's amazing. Christopher Nolan, ah, masterpiece. Anyway, he directed this film and I didn't even know he was a director. Literally, didn't even know he was a director. And then after I found out that he he directed this film, I thought to myself, man, you nailed this. I mean, you seriously, seriously nailed this. The character chemistry between the kids is one of the things that I loved about this movie so much. Like seriously, the way that their their dialogue to each other and that their just acting ability to each other really really it really is something else and speaking of cast and character chemistry guys one of the cast members in this movie and he sort of is sort of he kind of in in a way is it is a part of the lead because there's there's sort of several lead characters but he's a really really big element to this movie and that is Josh Gad who plays Mulch Diggums if you listen very closely to his narration throughout this movie because he's also the narrator and he has an on-screen presence as well but his narration to telling the story as the story flows on You'll actually listen very carefully, and it's actually it's Josh Gad through and through. It's really, really clever, really funny. It is exactly what you would think it is. It's Josh Gad, seriously. And man, he really, really has just character chemistry and acting chops and such comedic timing. He really has that element to his character in this movie that just makes you laugh. Like especially, especially, not adult humor, but adults will get what he's saying because it's funny. We all also have Thirtieth Shaw as Artemis Fowl himself. Guys, this apparently is his actually first movie he has ever done. And I tell you what, guys, for a first movie, he did a fantastic, fantastic job. He really did, guys. In my personal opinion, I think he absolutely nailed this movie out of the park. His chemistry in this movie really is played out extremely well. Like, honestly, with the rest of the cast members. And I honestly just thought that the the dialogue he had to be given and who he was as a young, which what I would seem as a very, very wealthy boy, you could tell that that's exactly what he is, was, and played in the movie. Like, truly, I was completely convinced. Whether he'll go on to, you know, become major success in Hollywood, Hey, this is his starting platform, guys. In my personal opinion, this is a great way to start a platform. So those of you who have seen Artemis Fowl, you'll know exactly what I'm about to say here. The flying creature at 49 minutes and 53 seconds was so ugly cute. As soon as it came flying past the screen, I was like, whoa, what is that? And then, you know, it flies around a little bit more, and I was like, oh, that's, yeah, okay. 
Yeah, 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 that is very ugly, but that is extremely cute for what it was. I won't even give it away, guys. For the, anyway, for those of you who have been following my, my, my reviews for any period of time, I do not do spoilers in my movie reviews because I just don't think they're fair because if you're going to watch a movie, go and watch it. Like, unless you want to know if it's good or bad, like, you know, watching my reviews to know if it's good or bad. My personal opinion, guys, I think this movie is great. But one of the things that I have to say about this movie that I found really, really cool was the creatures. Now, I won't give it away because there's several creatures in this movie, but the fantasy elements is really, really cool. There's one specific thing. I won't say what it is, but it's a specific thing, and they bring that character, that creature, I'll call it, back later on in the movie, and you're like, oh, that caused havoc earlier in the film and they brought it back to 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 have some more oh that sucks but it's really 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 well executed and i just i just thought the end sequence to, towards the end sequence of that creature was just so entertaining just brilliant so guys before i wrap this movie review up as i always do with all of my movie reviews guys i'm actually going to give you what what i would think would be one of my favorite parts of my movie reviews because it's something that i like to give you guys it's like my treat to you guys because i think it's fun it's enjoyable and it just gives you literally icing on a cake to reviews. And who doesn't love cake? Oh, I love cake so much. You know what time it is, guys. It's trivia time. Harvey Weinstein was producer on this movie, guys. But following the disclosure of his sexual misconduct, Disney removed Harvey Weinstein from the as the film producer as, and terminated its production partnership with the Weinstein Company. That's crazy, but hey, he's a bad guy and he deserved it. Next piece of trivia is, guys. The movie rights to Artemis Fowl were sold to Disney before the first book got published. That's cool. Next piece of trivia is, guys. The film has been in development since 2001. Owen Colfer has jokingly stated that the movie would be finished two years after he died. Next piece of trivia is, guys. Colin Farrell's involvement in the film was not announced until March 2020, nearly a year and a half after the teaser trailer was released and three years after filming wrapped. That's crazy. Next piece of trivia is, guys. In the Artemis Fowl novels, Domovoy Butler is described as a Eurasian, a heritage that helps him blend in wherever Artemis' adventure takes them. However, producer and director Kenneth Brenner says he always envisioned black actor Nonsoenosi as the butler in the role and cast him in the role. Next piece of trivia is, guys. Commander Root, a male character in the novels, is a female in the film. This version incorporates characteristics of Wing Commander Rain Vinaya, a female elf and a live Artemis, and of Holly. Next piece of trivia is, guys, Dame Judi Dench's third Disney movie after Home on the Range, 2004, and Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger, Stranger Tides, 2011. Next piece of trivia is, guys, in 2001, Lawrence Guter had signed on before replaced by Sir Kenneth Branagh. Next piece of trivia is, guys, Colin Farrell shot his scenes in three days, which actually doesn't is no surprise in any way, shape, or form once you've seen the movie. Next piece of trivia is, guys, producer and director Sir Kenneth Branagh also teamed up with Dame Judi Dench and Josh Gad on Murder on the Orient Express 2017. Next piece of trivia is, guys, this is Sir Kenneth Branner's second Disney movie after Cinderella 2015. He also directed Thor 2011, which was technically distributed by Paramount Pictures, but is part of Disney's Marvel Cinematic Universe. Next piece of trivia is, guys. Artemis Fowl, Erwin Colfer, also has a cameo in the film. Next piece of trivia is, guys. Colin Farrell's suit is Dolce & Gabbana. When the costume department met with him to pin the suit for adjustments, they were shocked to realize the suit didn't need any alterations whatsoever. Next piece of trivia is, guys. Dame Judi Gents' casting as Commander Root 
the head of a secret police of fairies, is a homage to Dench's previous role in the James Bond films as M, the chief of the secret intelligence service. Next piece of trivia is guys, Josh Gad's fourth Disney film after Frozen, 2013, Beauty and the Beast, 2017, and Frozen 2, 2019. Next piece of trivia is guys. And it is the final piece of trivia guys and I'll leave you with this one guys. Thanks for hanging in here. You guys are amazing. Producer and director Sir Kenneth Branagh and Non Soenozi collaborated on Jack Ryan's Shadow Recruit 2014 and Cinderella 2015. Guys, you guys are amazing. Thank you for sticking in here. I really appreciate your time. Seriously, as I said earlier, if you haven't and you're new to my channel, welcome. It's really good to have you here. I appreciate your time. Seriously, if you would be so kind, go ahead, subscribe, leave a like, click that bell for notifications. I appreciate your time. Until my next movie review, whatever that may be, don't forget who's bringing this movie review for Artemis Fowl 2020 on Disney+. This is Superman Steve, guys. Flying out.